What's going on, Bulls Nation? Welcome in to CHGO Bulls Podcast. Coming to you live from our studios here in West Loop, downtown Chicago. I am Peck, Bulls underscore Peck. Big Dave here. Bow! B-A-W-L Sports. And sitting in for our pal Joe, mm-hmm. it's our other pal, Love! Oh, 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 What's up, Love? Goodness, this show's weird. It's like, it's on at 1 o'clock. Like, I am so confused like, you know, as to why like, we're here right now. Big, <laughs> ba- big Dave's shouting out brags in the background. That idiot should still be yapping about the Bears in, on this set right now. <laughs> yeah, it's and true. Yet, here we are talking bulls. You can always come yell bulls. I mean, I feel that. like you're very used to sitting in that producer's chair at this time of yeah, day. Wanting true. to end my life usually based on the... Toxic I feel channel. like my life is backwards because <laughs> we are sitting on this set at 1 p.m. That's exciting. I am so confused. Yeah. Let's go, man. This but we're fun. here. We're here. I, I feel awesome. It's weird seeing the sun. He's right. Oh, gosh, it's so great. You're seeing the sun. Out. The sun was so did. high up in the sky yeah. when I walked into the it office was. today. It really was. I like Craziness. it because it's sunny and chilly. So it's something for everybody <laughs> with hints, the hoodie, and the shorts. It works. Yeah. It works. It works, ladies and gentlemen. Love it. Sales guy Apparently, uh, sales guy Jim approves. The first time I've seen you guys in person in like a month. <laughs> I thought yeah. it was a couple of weeks ago we just saw you. Oh, yeah. that, that's a month. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I when, we had, when we had the great Dallas debate. Yeah, I ain't seen T in I don't know how long. <laughs> right. <laughs> I ain't seen T in a minute. Like, T's been watching. Right, the watch along. Wait a minute, that wasn't months ago. That was the watch along. Uh, that was semi recently. Semi recent. Yeah, yeah, man. A couple, oh, couple weeks ago. Along. No, you were here the day we did it. You, and that's when we had the Dallas thing, and then we brought John Sabine on during the watch along. It's true. <laughs> it just feels Jim. like you're always here, man. Sales guy Jim. That's not a bad thing, I'm he's, saying. He's always in the chat. He, usually he has a, a weird avatar where he looks like some 22 year old punk. Yeah. Now, you now don't like the J. Yeah. Did you want to punch him in the that? face? Is that what you're yes. saying? You why, are, is it just yes. a, why is it just the letter J? What happened to your uh, Blink 182 avatar? <laughs> Oh, okay. Oh, I see. I see. All I the see. small things is what he says. Hey, oh. Hey. <laughs> what up, Chris? Chris is here too. My man Chris T is out. here as well. Like, it's good to see him. Steven's over there. Like, yeah. 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 I was really excited about the Bulls uh, potentially getting back to 500 tomorrow night. Me? Uh, well, sure. <laughs> but also our boy Chris. Oh, he the can't first believe. thing he said to me when he when I walked in earlier. First thing, hey man. Second thing he said to me. You're right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> he's ready. He's like almost there, right at the 500. <laughs> Say it's been a while. And I know you got that cackling evil laugh that I'm sure you did when he said that to you. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sounds about right. Uh, right and a, there and he a, is. And a massive eye roll. Look at yeah. that guy. There's the face that Lawrence wants to punch. Did you know uh. that no one likes you when you're 23? <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. Look at this fuck. I mean, no, no, so. one, no one liked me when I was 23. Say it ain't so. Except for my friends who were also 23. Uh, I will not go. Uh, Colin said, what's up, Colin? I need more say by and also need more Lawrence. Well, Lawrence is here Hi. right, right yeah, here, right now. Here, right here, Thanks, Colin. Also, Appreciate if you're looking for a little say by in your life, tune into pre and post game Ooh. next Wednesday. Tease. It's called a tease. Tease. That's a Peck. deep tease. Um, speaking of teases, I mean, I feel like Law, because you're here with us and yeah. you've been the de facto Bears producer for the last two years. De are facto. you you excited that uh, some of our crew are at Caleb Williams Pro Day as oh, we I'm, speak? I'm very excited by the whole concept of Pro Days. They're fun to watch. Just saw a video yeah, of Ryan Pohl shaking hands with uh, Caleb Williams' dad. Yeah, that's actually pretty cool. Caleb uh, Williams, Keenan we, Allen hanging out at Caleb Williams Pro Day. That's we have cool. confirmed that uh, it is now official. The Bears are drafting Caleb Williams number one because there's a handshake agreement. Yeah. I think look, it's out there. Look at Colin already saying, awesome. Yeah, this is we're breaking news over here. Yeah. For you guys, uh, man. There, I don't know. There also is a uh, video that our good friend Nicholas Moriano took of Caleb throwing left-handed. Slick Nick. So uh, Caleb apparently is left-handed this whole time. We didn't know that. Wow. Ooh, or is he amphibious? He is <laughs> definitely amphibious. Amphibious. <laughs> <laughs> or ambidextrous, depending on who you're asking. <laughs> don't ask Chris Weber. <laughs> 
classic, man. Uh, let's so, go, Chris. Let's do it up. 35 and 35 <laughs> incoming. Come on, Chris. Let's go. yippee ki yay um, Fun <laughs> stuff to talk about on today's show. Some beautiful, interesting, fascinating, glowing words from the mouth of Bulls head coach, Billy Donovan, about two of the young guys that Bulls fans are really excited about this season, who okay. have, we've enjoyed watching this season, Kobe White and Io DeSumo, um, who maybe are the backcourt of the future. Maybe. Like, legitimately, it's looking like that could be a real possibility depending on what happens with Lonzo and Zach this offseason. This is true. Uh, but, so, before we dive into some of the fascinating stuff we heard from Billy Donovan the other day about his two young guards, wanted first to give this quick update from oh. our guy, Will the Go Gottlieb. Come on with it. Who was at Bulls practice earlier today, mm -hmm. just wrapped up a little bit ago. Mm -hmm. um, and he posted a vid of chatting with Kobe, who was a full participant in today's practice. No limitations. Um, the, uh, Kobe said the plan is to go for him to go through shoot around tomorrow in Houston, leading up to their game against the Rockets. Mm -hmm. And assuming all goes well with shoot around and no setbacks or anything, knock on wood, he's going to play tomorrow night. Mm. I seem to recall a young man on this show that we did uh, last show saying, mark it down, Kobe White will be playing next game. Is it this young man right here? I mean, it Tomorrow? could be. I mean, I just know he was ruggedly handsome. <laughs> yep. Had mm -hmm. incredible shoes on and is just sexiness for days. Like, I do know that was going on. But he did say this, that Kobe White will be playing this next game. And Will Gottlieb kind of adhered to this when the injury first happened. He wanted Kobe to, you know, sit a little bit because of the teams that they were playing. Right. Which made sense to us. Cause once and that he, at the time, was leading the league in minutes played. <laughs> That part. So <laughs> it's a blessing in disguise. He got some rest. He got to heal up as well. And they're going to need him against this Rockets team, man. They really will. Uh, C Red UK, shout out to our pals, said, thank God for Kobe's flexibility. Do you mean how when he got landed on, yeah. his body just sort of was able to absorb some of that yeah, yeah. and the injury wasn't worse? Because I was terrified when we watched that injury oh, play out and yeah. then the replay of it and i was like "Ooh." let me ask you do you think of yourself when you see those kind of injuries and you'd be like well i would probably be a dead person right now uh, so. uh, yes i would be a corpse okay, uh, okay. an actual corpse okay i'm wondering because you always like ah, i'm very concerned you, about it i'm wondering if you're picturing you in that situation you are aware that in season one of our CHO softball league, okay. I pulled my quad and or hamstring every time I ran to first yeah, base. And then I happened to show up just to hang out, and then you did that, and I had to bat for the like, I had to play softball for the first time in like twenty years. Well, you should not feel as easy good as about it looks, right? It's yeah. not. You should feel good about it. This was an all star right here, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, all star true. Matt Peck, even with the messed up quad. Yeah, an all star in the sense that the best ability is availability. <laughs> he was available. So I may have pulled a muscle every week, but I showed up but every week. He was week. there every week. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Will Purdue. Yeah. It then, happened. Then Carm found him found us springers and I was like, oh y'all, y'all are good. <laughs> and then said champions. Best of luck to you. And then they hoisted the championship trophy. Feels good. Felt good to host it. <laughs> felt, felt good. Felt good, man. Uh so good news on the Kobe White front. Sounds like uh barring any setbacks, he will be back in action for the Bulls tomorrow night. Interesting. Uh I'm curious to see if they're gonna set some kind of minutes restriction on Kobe in yeah. his first game back. Yeah. Because that would be substantial considering that he has had the opposite of a minutes restriction all season long. It would be you're right. It would he be He's had a minutes minimum yes. all season long. Cuz Tory Craig he's like, "No, nah, take your time. Kobe, yeah. you're fine. <laughs> Get out there and play." Yeah. Clayton saying he will be wearing his sub zero rock Kobe's the sub zero, sub -zero shirt, t shirt baby. Uh, also ready. another little in uh update from Billy as far as players w going through injuries from practice earlier today from our guy Will to go. Billy says Patrick Williams surgery went well. Should be back with the team, obviously not playing, mm -hmm. uh, at the beginning of April. Okay. So, you know, going through the initial stages of rehabbing after getting his surgery, but the surgery went well. Good. Good, good. News, good news there. That is good news. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what Billy Donovan said. Let's do it, Matt. Because, man, some of these quotes from Billy. Look at you. Look at you. Uh, yeah. Look at In case him. you already couldn't tell from the glorious thumbnail that our guy Lawrence made for us. It was glorious. Oh. <laughs> Anytime I see a picture of Joe Keem screaming his primal scream, yes. I'm a fan of it. This is true. When it's paired with young Kobe and Io, mm -hmm. also looking determined. Even more of a fan. I mean, desktop home screen. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I, I did put a poll question on the, uh, on the show today on YouTube. I noticed that. Okay. How great is today's thumbnail? Is it <laughs> A, amazing, B, the best, or C, uh, that like the emoji of the like snorting. So, that, yes. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. The tough emoji. No, thank you, tough. Clayton. 
We here for you, man. We we exist because of you, to be honest with you. Um. So, wow. Okay. Billy was being asked about the competitiveness, the drive yeah. of Kobe White, I would assume, the yeah. growth that they both made this season. Mm-hmm. And in the early stages of him trying to explain it and compare it to his previous experiences coaching young players. Mm-hmm. Uh, Billy said that the biggest jump he had ever seen a player make was Joe Keem. Yes. Joe Keem Noah. Breathe. Of Bulls greatness. <laughs> Breathe. From his freshman year to, at Florida to his sophomore year. Yeah. He said he went from a guy his freshman year who was playing like six minutes a game and it was hard for him and then went from that to probably may, uh, he would have been the number one player taken in the draft the next year mm-hmm. had he gone instead of returning uh, to Florida to defend the title. Mm-hmm. Um, and he said this, quote, I do think there's a lot of similarities mentality-wise between those guys. Joe Keem is very, very driven, very motivated. He's all about the team and winning. I think you could put Kobe and Io into that category of how they view things. I think that their growth and maturation has been a true definition of their character competitively. Mm, mm. Dave, thoughts? Man, several. <laughs> uh, one, it's great to hear that from Billy. That he thinks that highly. Because one, not only is he comparing of Joe Kim Noah, he's comparing him to the player he coached, right. Joe Kim Noah. Yeah, That's a different kind of level. So he holds that team in a pretty high esteem. He's a back-to-back champions, as you mentioned, with, that we're talking about. So any comparison to that, that the person who was coaching that team can give to that, lends credence and gives it some validity. And the other part is he played here you know, for the Chicago <laughs> Bulls. So we know what it means and we know what we saw. Uh, when we were looking at it. Two, for him to be saying that about Kobe and Io at such a young age in their first season, pretty much getting being that backcourt duo solidified for the Chicago Bulls is another huge thing. It also points to the reasoning why he plays them so many minutes. Um, he understands the work they put in and the drive that they got. So that kind of comparison to a dude who we know was going to play no matter what, injury would be down. We could talk about game seven against the Nets all day long, if you would like to, because yep. he was injured that game and still carried that team to that victory right there. So that's the kind of thing he kind of sees in these young guys, in, yeah. in Kobe and Io, just kind of getting into their prime. That was prime Joe Kim Noah. You know what I mean? Those, those things I just mentioned yep. were prime Joe Kim Noah. So for them to not even be there yet and just kind of moving along and getting into it under the contracts they're under, knowing that they'll be here, it's a good feeling to hear him say those things. Yeah, it's incredible. And and then he went further saying that everybody talks about player development all the time. Uh, and all these NBA teams have great resources, great facilities. They've got everything. If the player's not driven, really driven, mm-hmm. it doesn't make a difference. That far. He said, and then went on to amend it like, you know, it's not all on the players. It's mm-hmm. not solely their responsibility. That's why we have coaching staffs. That's why we have film rooms and film breakdowns. That's why we have strength and conditioning staff. Mm-hmm. But that if the player themselves did not want to take those steps Mm -hmm. then it doesn't matter how great the facilities are that your team has it doesn't matter how great those coaching and strength and conditioning resources are Mm -hmm. to you um and i think that as like some people might shrug off that point and and or and or debate its validity i have always been a basketball fan who firmly believes that that is true when you're talking about players making significant leaps in their game and how much they can contribute to their team winning especially in this early phase of their career the first four or five years of their career putting in that work themselves because they are that driven and they're they are driven by their competitiveness and their desire to win which is what we all knew Joe Kim always was. Always was, man. It, Not the most talented guy. No, But no. boy, did he want to win the most. It just makes coaching easy. I'll mm-hmm. say that. I know we got to hit, the, but it, it makes coaching very easy when you got those kind of guys with that kind of mentality. It really does. Uh, let's take a first break, then we'll come back, dive right back into this conversation because there are even more fascinating <laughs> things that Billy Donovan said, and including other future Hall of Fame players more? that he has been comparing Kobe and Io to. Well, you love them, right? Uh, one of the two of them I love. <laughs> one of the two of them I have great respect for. Uh, that's on the other side of the break. While we're doing that, you know what to do. Multitask. Listen to us read these ads of these wonderful sponsors of ours and hit the like button. We know that Joey's not here right now to advocate for his twin brother, Troll Joe, Mm-mm. but that doesn't mean that Lawrence would not also like your likes. He would. 
Would love yeah, I'm it. happy to show Joey Thumbs if you want. <laughs> Joey Thumbs! Oh, Troll Joey Joe! Thumbs. There he is. Look at him. What a guy. Look just, at him. Just so nice. Just, just wants the thumbs. That's it. Just a heart of gold and a chest of ear. <laughs> chest of thumbs. <laughs> this might be an ear or two in there. Might be an ear or two in there. We'll see. <laughs> he gets carried away sometimes. <laughs> might be. Also, like good, good for Troll Joe to know how to spell thumbs. This is true. I, you, you never know the the spelling accuracy of trolls. So, like, do, do trolls go to school? I know one thing I saw on him, man. What's that? It looked like his shirt needed to be a little clean. Yeah, something he should take care of right there. Where should he take it? Oh, that's only one place he should go, and that's CD One Place Kringlers, baby. Sick Are you Dave! kidding me? Are you kidding me? Oh, I love that. That's the only place you should be going, <laughs> man. Because I know Troll Joe has questions. Of course, he's like, of course, I trust you. What you're saying, I should go get that at that wonderful cleaners that you mentioned. Sure, sure. But why? I have thumbs, but I don't have a ton of money. They got low prices. Customers save over 30% on their dry cleaning bill by switching to CD1 price cleaners. Well, then Trojo might be like, well, you know, I don't want to deal with the hassle. I don't want to deal with these things right there. <laughs> Simple, transparent service. Other cleaners charge a different price for every garment type. Plus, they have upcharges, and you may pay a different price each time you visit. But at CD1 Price Cleaners, one low price for any garment, even those sports jerseys that I know that I got that my main man, Troll Joe, has also. Of course. One low price. Well, he's going to need his rags back now. Fast turn around at CD1 Price Cleaners. They have got your order ready the same or the next day. Other cleaners take two to four days, and... To have your garments ready. Two to four? Nope. Next day? Yes. Well, he also, I got all these thumbs, so that means I could be texting. I, can they hit me up with that? Text alerts. CD1 Price Cleaner sends you a text when your order is ready for pickup. They got dry cleaning, the wash and fold laundry, blankets and comforters, tailoring and alterations, which is something I be needing all the time. Leather cleaning. Matt has those leather pants cleaned often. The area rug cleaning. Mm. All these things taken care of, y'all. So why don't you and Troll Joe go on down and visit chgo.cd1.com. The link is in the description, ladies and gentlemen. Once you're there, you can pick from an in-store coupon or an online pickup and delivery coupon option. That's chgo.cdone.com. It's the CD1 Price Cleaners. One price! One love. One price, Sarah. <laughs> Prize picks. Oh, my gosh. The tourney. We are there. It's here. The tourney's arrived. In your face. We got the first four matchups last night. We got two more first four matchups tonight. 14 points. Um, shout out to our, our friends over there at DNVR. What are you doing, Who got Virginia? to watch just an absolute dismantling in Virginia. I don't yeah. know if you saw that game last yeah. night. but I, When I saw 14 points, I woo, yes. And no now the other Colorado team is trying to uh, take their turn to punch their ticket they are. Uh, in one of those uh, first four games tonight. Shout out to them. Why, why am I so excited for the tourney? Please well, for lots of reasons, but a big one being prize picks. Mm. Prize picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They're the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of betting thousands of other, uh, instead of battling thousands of other players, thousands. including pros and sharks and maybe thumb trolls, oh. you pick more than or less than on two to six different player stat projections. Mm -hmm. Just you making those picks. Mm -hmm. Watch the winnings roll in. Conference tournaments, they're already in the rearview mirror. The real tourney started last night slash tonight slash for realsies tomorrow with like maybe one of the best days in the year. I don't know about you. For realsies. Love it. The Thursday <laughs> of March Madness kicking off. First tip off, 11.15 yep. a.m. Central Time tomorrow. Sexy. I am Jonesen. <laughs> oh, and I'm going to have so much fun yes. making my picks on prize picks. Mm -hmm. You can do it for the men's tourney and the women's tourney. You can also kind of mix and match and do it with some NBA action that, of course, is still going on. Some NHL if you're a hockey fan. Yeah. You can win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn 10 bucks into $1,000 with NBA, NHL, and college hoops entries today on prize picks. America's mm -hmm. number one fantasy sports app. Mm. Go to prizepicks.com slash CHGO and use code CHGO for a first deposit match up to $100. Ooh. That's prizepicks.com slash CHGO. <laughs> Promo code CHGO for that first deposit match. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. That easy. Do it. 
now. <laughs> Shout out to our boy Hayes hanging out in the comments. <laughs> Still won't let that go, huh? Will never let me let go. <laughs> just, just an innocent, just, just innocent, an innocent Bulls fan, just reading some ad copy. Didn't know what was going on. I don't know. I still don't know. Oh, I, I don't fun. even know what you're talking about. It was, it was, man, what a fun day. <laughs> shout out, hey, shout out Pat the designer, baby. <laughs> oh, man, that was a fun day. It was awesome. Awesome stuff. It was awesome. Yes. Um, okay, so diving back into our combo about what Billy Donovan was saying about his young guys, Kobe and Io, yeah. the other day. Um, here's the next guy he compared him to. Okay. Just being, around, man. just being around a guy like Chris Paul oh! for a year. CP3? I mean, he is nuts. He's nuts. Everything is to the complete nth degree. He's trying to gain every possible advantage. Yes. Those guys that have that kind of drive, those are the guys that generally make those big jumps. Mm. That's what he said. And as much as I kind of roll my eyes at Chris Paul all the time, because we all know that he's a dirty player, the evidence is there, the tape is there. He's dirty. There is an element of what Billy Donovan is expressing here, which is like, yo, he's crazy. <laughs> It's the same when when Joe Keem had his short but successful stint with the Clippers. Yep. Uh, or, I mean, with, with the Grizzlies. Yes. Yeah. And his coach was like, yo, Joe Keem is effing crazy. Literally what he said. <laughs> <laughs> Billy saying that he sees some overlap here in the way that he's already been able to observe how Io and how Kobe operate, mm -hmm. their mentality, their approach. And that that is what allows players who are young to make significant leaps like the ones that we've seen them make this season. The comparison to Joe Kim Noah satisfied my heart. Mm -hmm. The comparison to Chris Paul satisfied my brain. Ooh, and your mind, too. And my mind, too. Chello. <laughs> um, for this one, it was because of several reasons. One, because we know Kobe White works very closely with Chris Paul. That's one of his mentors. That's one of the person that has taught him the game. That's one of the people that he trains with in the offseason that he holds in very high regard and high, high uh, esteem is Chris Paul. So to hear him compare to the person that he has been learning and training from mentally, that's a great thing. Like, I loved hearing that, and it lets me know Kobe mentally is on the right track, just as long as he's not punching people in, in special places. He's, mm -hmm. he's on the right track with that. The other one was the fact he said it about Io because we're talking point guards. Yeah. Like, that's he's playing your position. Yep. So the fact that you have a mentality of a dude, how you feel about him or not, one of the greatest point guards ever – if you having that kind of mentality that matches his, and now you're combining that with a guy that already has that mentality of Kobe White, that satisfies this up here for me, man, because I'm like, okay, well, now I'm comfortable putting you guys anywhere. What do you want? You want the one, you want the two, and it lets me know that they are smart enough to play off of each other and know what the other one needs. That comes with continuity. Sorry, that's a horrible word for y'all, but it's the truth. That's what it comes with. So that comparison really – hit it home for me. And also that Billy Donovan coached him mm -hmm. on top of that. So yeah. he saw Chris Paul, as he said in his example, yeah. of getting in that world at 4 a.m. Like he talked about gaming those advantages. He watched it happen. So to watch it happen, knowing that that's your mentor and knowing that they play, both of them are playing kind of the same position, that satisfies my brain so much up here, man. It just made me even more happy. Yeah. I, you know, I, as I said, I, I roll my eyes at a, a lot of Chris Paul, but – I also can't deny that he has been a uh, a big sort of big brother slash mentor in Kobe White's life and his young basketball development for a long time now, you right. know, in his a a a AAU pro program. And then wondering if this young tandem, Kobe and I, really has what it takes to be like the starting backcourt of the next few years for a bull team that is more competitive than the one that we're seeing this year right. and their growth being one of the reasons one of the significant reasons why the bulls might actually be a competitive team mm -hmm. next season moving forward mm -hmm. with moving on from some of the pre-existing pieces correct zach right. levine lonzo ball yes um and, and that that mentality again mm -hmm. being what allows them to make those jumps then he went from chris paul to steph curry oh with a specific example about Kobe and the number of minutes Kobe is playing this uh -huh. season, saying, I think it's really good for Kobe to sort of self-evaluate and reflect and say, okay, this season, what do I have to work on? After playing through and observing what I've done this season, what I've improved upon, what I've built my game, next season, what do I need to work on this offseason mm -hmm. to get ready for? And he said, if I were Kobe, I would think, 
endurance, yeah, stamina, making sure that I can be out there playing as many minutes as I want to play and need to play. Mm -hmm. And then he re and then Billy Donovan referenced Steph Curry and the, just the amount of ground he covers in every NBA game. Yeah. Because he's literally just running around sc multiple screens on yes. every possession yeah. every night yeah. and saying, hey, that's not an accident. It's not a coincidence that Steph Curry is capable of doing all that running mm -hmm. to get himself open. Mm -hmm. He knew that that was absolutely pivotal to the strongest element to his game. So Steph Curry has been working on his endurance and his yeah. stamina all these years. So awesome to hear this because everybody he's being they're being compared to are insane people. Yes. Like really crazy. and I'm talking yeah. about crazy basketball. The people, Hall of Famers. I mean? Like Hall of Right. Hall of Famers, man. Champions. Like this is what we're talking about. Well not here. Chris Paul. But well not <laughs> not Chris Paul. Just lob yeah. that one over the plate. Hall of Famers, Ooh, yes. Supposed to just let that one go. No, I, I got it. Yep. I, I, <laughs> I gave him Hall of Famers. You're an all star softball player. He is, that hey, that's true. That's true. That is the all star swinger right there. That's what he does, man. Take that how you want. But, <laughs> but, but I, I Please do, only take it the one way. You know, but I, I like that fact, man, because these are all guys everyone is kind of looking up to and modeling their game after, but who's looking up to and modeling their work after? Right. You know what I mean? Those are two different things. Kobe's game is not like anyone else's. Ayo's game is definitely not like anyone else's. No. So what can you take from those guys? To get better. The mentality. That's all you can take is the mental uh, of what they do to get ready, to get better, and to dominate you on the floor. Now he's talking domination when he's going to Steph Curry. Right. We're talking one of the best, one the best shooter we've ever seen, but one of the best point guards also of all time, and one of the best players of all time who might end up on Mount Rushmore when it's all said and done. Yeah. So when you're talking about those kind of comparisons, that makes me even more excited, you know, going forward with this young backcourt, man, because those kind of crazy mentality things, because both of them show no emotion on the floor. Right. Both of them just are robots when it comes to playing and hitting those big shots. They show it when he, when a dunk happens for Kobe, you'll see some emotion. Ayo is just a robot, man. Yeah. He's just like straight yeah. up out there focused, beep borp, boop borp, I got you. <laughs> That's what he's on. So I love this, man. I truly love I love basketball crazy. Mm -hmm. I need more basketball crazy on this team. I, why do you think Joakim is like my favorite player of all time? Because he's this. freaking hey. crazy. Oh, you have a type. We've seen uh, <laughs> Joel in the comments saying, I and Kobe's element gives me hope for Dalen and Julian Phillips. Yeah. Why not? I, I think it should. Colin saying, satisfy my heart is the best Joakim quote ever. Also, Kobe and I satisfy my hope. Ooh. Mm. Mm, hope, hope is a dangerous like thing, that. but also a beautiful thing. It is dangerous, but that is awesome. Um, like that. So, and then here's the last thing. And, and Billy was sure to say, hey, I'm not comparing Kobe or Io's game to Chris Paul's game. Exactly. To Steph Curry's game. Exactly. But he said, I think Kobe and Io are learning. Mm -hmm. I'm not comparing their games to anybody, but the mentality. I love both of those guys. Mentality. Love it. They're both very, very driven, the exact same thing you said about Joaquin, and competitive. Both have a lot to learn, but you feel confident that they'll figure it out because of the drive. Yes. I feel like for all of the tap dancing Billy Donovan does when he's talking to the media about his players, yeah. that was so clearly laid out yes. in a way that as, as a fan, yes. I, like, I buy it. Yes. If that's a pitch, I buy it. Yes, man. Because, he's not, again, he's not giving you, feeding you stuff about their games. Like, my dad always told me, like, life is 90% mental, 10% physical. So we know the physical aspects of what they do, but it's all about what's up here. As you were stating earlier, you can give them everything, but unless they got the work ethic and want, and the drive to want to do it, it's just going to be stuff that sits there that's very shiny. Right. That will never get used. you got to have that drive. Kobe has it. Because think of where those two guys came from to get to this point. Io, second round pick, 38th pick, took that very personally. Mm -hmm. Then he had to battle to get in the game uh, during the preseason, and then when the first time he – got to the first game of the season, he was playing. Right. And and then affecting the team as it went on. We all remember the Boston game where he didn't miss a shot. Mm -hmm. So and then went to a starter, then went back to the bench. Yeah. And then is back in the starting lineup again. And since his, you know, going through his tenure, since his rookie years as Chicago Bull, Kobe White's role has changed even more, mm -hmm. arguably so. Correct. Um, you know, fighting for minutes on a squad that had nobody worth playing more minutes than Kobe White. Yeah. His rookie year, yep. uh, and and then changing from okay, given a chance uh, to earn that starting uh, point guard spot, didn't go great. 
you know, the first time around, his second season in the NBA, he struggled. The Bulls were going through all kinds of roster turnover and overhaul. And then the new front office comes in, Billy Donovan comes in, and then they go out and get all these other pieces, including yeah. Lonzo Ball and DeMar. And yep. Zach is, you know, ascending to all-star caliber player. And Kobe is just sort of floating, floating, <laughs> you know, floating in the open ocean, not really sure where he's going to be yeah. on any given well, night, how many minutes he's playing on any given night. And the fact that he and Io have both gone through these, you know, turbulent uh, first few seasons of their careers with what their role is. Yes. What is asked of them on, on you know, month to month, night to night. And that they have both maintained their like sense of self mm. and their work ethic throughout mm. all of that is, I think, very encouraging for Bulls fans. I love how you said that because that's so that is that definitely applies, especially to Kobe. Like we all talking to Io when he would come here, you all we all knew mentally he was solid. Mm-hmm. Like he and and the people he had supporting him to his shout out to his parents. Like you knew mentally he was solid, and everything he kind of said, he was kind of wise beyond his years when he would talk. Kobe, man, always. It felt like that he never thought what everyone else thought he should be. Mm-hmm. And when everyone is telling him what he kind of should be, he always like, no, I'm a starter. And they're like, yeah, that's great. Treat, you know, you treat him like you miss, make a wish kid or something. Like, yeah, that's nice. You know, here's a ball. There you go, Cove. You know, we're going to put this right here on the fridge. You know, good job. <laughs> no, man. It, on the fridge? Like really? Right. Exactly. Right there with multiple magnets. No, man, it didn't happen that way. Kobe didn't care what you thought. He's like, I am better than that. I am going to be a starter in this league. And it's just wild how to get to this point because it took injuries and it took failures from other players, you know, not playing well Mm -hmm. to put them in these spots. Or it took, like, other guys just not being available for them to be like, okay, we're here. We're in this spot. This is what we're going to do. The other part I like, Matt, is more of the insanity is they're also learning from another crazy basketball person in DeMar DeRozan. Yeah. So you throw true. that crazy mentality at her as yeah. well, man. Uh, Uncle DeMar's off-season camp. Yes, like his youngins. That's, right. <laughs> <laughs> my youngins. My it's like, youngins. hey, Dale and Terry, guess what? Practice starts at 5 a.m. today. Four. And Dale's <laughs> like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I didn't know that was an hour that humans were allowed to be awake. (laughs) Well, welcome kid. You know what I mean? (laughs) But that's, but that's so great. Like all this basketball crazy is going on right now for these two young guys who are not even in their seventh years in the NBA, who are barely even out of their twenties. And it's just, it's exciting, man. It's just really exciting knowing going forward, we pretty much can have this backcourt of the future. Uh, I like uh, our boy Hayes saying, uh, I compare Kobe and Io and how they fit together similar to Kirk and Dang. Mm. Interesting. Mm. Co- Kobe being Kirk. Okay. Io being Luol. Io being Luol. Maybe a little bit. Yeah. Um, I can I mean, see that. Uh, uh, saying two well-rounded players that can really fit into uh, on any modern team, and it gives the Bulls a ton of flexibility. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, I, I think – that's one thing you can maybe feel hopeful about is that mm-hmm. regardless of how the front office approaches this upcoming off season, yeah. are they going to try and get off the final year of Lonzo's deal? Are they going to still try to move Zach Levine somewhere? Yeah. And yeah. then how else do you keep this roster um, moving forward and, you know, signing DeMar to a new contract? Yeah. Um, and then, you know, Patrick Williams contract situation. There's still a lot of what ifs. It's nice to have a couple of not what ifs or what the hell's going to happen. Right. Which right. is like, hey, Kobe, hey, Io, just go work on your games this right. offseason. Right. And then whatever, whatever the hell the plan is next season, mm-hmm. you can feel good knowing that they will both be here. And the guard play in the East is wide open. Mm-hmm. It's not like out in the West. It's wide open in the East. Yeah. We're talking like Damian Lillard, Drew Holiday, Trey Young. Why can't Kobe and Io be up there on those levels? Seriously. Indeed. Jalen Brunson? Mm-hmm. Jalen Brunson. Jalen Brunson, Ooh. yes. Don't want to disrespect. You're yeah. right. Jalen Brunson. Yeah, I mean. Knicks go to hell. He, uh, <laughs> speaking of which, the Bulls still have, I think, three games uh, left to play against the Knicks oh. in their final 13. I don't like that. Yeah, well. <laughs> well all right. I, I ain't to, scared of no ass whooping, as I told you, Mac. Bring it on. Hate Bring to it tell, on. Hate to tell you. Bring, <laughs> bring it on. Uh, let's take our second break right there. Yeah. We'll come back and uh, dive into some. Uh, mailbag questions we got from our diehards in the Discord yeah. yesterday and into today. Some fun questions that we will address. Shout out to our diehard Discords um, hanging out. Sign up to be a diehard if you aren't already. That's so right. you can hang out in the, di- uh, the Discord chat with our fellow diehard Bulls fans. Uh, Dave, what do we have on deck? And by the way, while you're answering that question to me, y'all answer this question from us. 
Hit that like button. Hit that like button. It's not a question, but a wonderful statement, ladies and gentlemen. Shout out Clayton also with the same sentiment. But Matt and I like to chill. Lawrence, oh. do you like to chill? Love to chill. Love chilling. You love chilling? That Like a villain. Like <laughs> on penicillin? Uh, Ready no, and I'm willing? I'm actually allergic to penicillin. Oh, <laughs> Got to go with the amoxicillin over here. Well, <laughs> I know what he's not allergic to. That's a good time. And where he can get that good time is with some frosty cold cores light. Yes. So whether your team is stressing you out, hello, this guy, <laughs> or life in general, things can feel chaotic. But that's why cores light helps Wait. you find we your did, moments. Just, to there's chill. a hat throw happening. Oh yeah, oh, yeah baby. I said that's what the team's stressing the ball. The on the go. ball, Lawrence. Yeah. yeah, gotta keep that hat throw. Keep that for the record. <laughs> Oh, man. So, as you told us, there's many ways you can chill. You can lay back. You can stand up. You can lay down. However you're doing it, as long as you got one of them frosty cold coolers lights in your hand, you're doing it right. I promise you that. Because Matt's going to be doing it 11 a.m. tomorrow watching that NCAA tournament. I mean, we do have a Bulls game tomorrow night. I probably shouldn't Thursday of March Madness kickoff just start demolition drinking at 11 a.m. I just said 11 a.m. you'll have one. I didn't say drink all of them. You know what I'm drinking? Responsibly, kids. But <laughs> that should be what I do on the first day of March Madness. It will be one of if these I days. If I didn't have work that night. It will, it will be one of these ways because you're not going to have a game now, all Friday. Weekend. He's going to be on it, y'all. And when those mountains turn blue, it's as cold as the Rockies. Cold lager, cold filter, and cold package for that smooth finish, man. It's mountain cold, refreshment, crisp, and refreshing at the Colorado Rockies. So when it's time to chill. Grab that Coors Light. Get it delivered straight to your door with Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash C-H-G-O basketball. Coors Light. Find your chill. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company. Golden, Colorado. Golden, Colorado. Um, I feel like uh, I should take a, a road trip out there sometime. Mm. I mean, I've, whenever I want to go visit my friends in Colorado, I typically fly. But yeah, I love I love a good road trip too. Airport sucks. Yeah. Uh, you know what you need for a good road trip though? What is this? A reliable car. Oh, well, duh! Yes, I'm a dummy. Even better, a reliable truck. Oh, extra room. What are you gonna get? I need my head those? room. I need my leg room. He needs both. I do. Double dose. At Ray Chevy. That's the place. You in the market for a new vehicle? Because the best offers of the year are during the March Radness sales event. Oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> No, he didn't say that. Oh, yes, I he did. did. He said that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Mr. Burgundy will read anything you put in that teleprompter. <laughs> Make your way to Ray Chevrolet on Route 12 in Fox Lake to join in on the savings. One of the top selling Chevy dealers in the Midwest. So you'll always be able to uh, shop one of Chicago Land's largest Chevy inventories. Perfect for tailgating vehicles. Perfect for road trips. They await you at Ray Chevy during the truck month. month. For a limited time, they're offering 0% financing for 72 months on new Silverados with over 100 Silverados available. Mm. 125 vehicles under $20,000. Mm. That's right. Under 20000 125 in their inventory. Seriously, guys, can pricing get more affordable? <laughs> Chandler Bing? Could Big Dave's Gams look any better? Gams. Everyone loves the word free. You know that, right, Dave? This is a fact. Troll Joe knows it, too. Yeah. Uh, so that's what you'll get this month when you head to Ray Chevrolet in Fox Lake. A free oil change. And all you need to do is mention CHGO when scheduling that oil change at Ray Chevrolet. Start off the new year right and schedule it by April 1st. Visit Ray Chevrolet in Fox Lake. RayChevrolet.com is the website. They've been serving the community since 1963. Find new roads. Sexy. Ooh. Ray Chevrolet. <laughs> so many Silverados. <laughs> all of them. Oh, I, give me all the Silverados. Give me all the Silverados, <laughs> man. Every last one. Um, okay, Dev, you want, you want to dive into some uh, diehard Discord AMAs? Oh, man. Some mailbags? Literally why I'm here. Let's, Let's do, do it, it, baby. Uh first one comes to us from at nick parts who said hindsight being 2020 okay what move from the last three years would you have done differently than what ak did to give the bulls more success success mm. he adds meaning could uh can mean different things whether mm -hmm. it be more wins now or more wins down the road or more flexibility 
with your team and your organization and, you know, your money. Mm-hmm. And for me, it's re-signing Vooch. <laughs> like, I think that's it. Um, I understand the position they were in. They were kind of in a no-win position, but they kind of put themselves in that position. So that's what I would probably do differently is, one, let's have a talk about restructuring. Let's have that discussion, man, because you want 20 mil. That's nice. You think you can go out there and get that. Let's find out. Yeah. But, yeah, I would, in hindsight, that that is the one I would go back and probably – yeah, change up right there. Maybe yeah, some draft picks I mean, too, but you know, that's we'll that one because that I think that was a more even more egregious bidding against themselves yeah. example than the Demar signing trade, Correct. which was also not great. Right. When you think back to what they gave up to get Demar, Correct. in that Correct. sign and trade deal, yes, they got Demar. We got Demar. out of that, we and his production over the last three seasons <laughs> far exceeded. You cannot argue. Mm-mm. He's outplayed his contract. That's true. What maybe Bulls fans can be frustrated about him having not outplayed, and that's not his fault, is the fact that two of the last three years we had to watch Orlando take the Bulls' first-round draft pick. Mm -hmm. Oh, and we also had to give them Thad Young, who at the time was still a very usable piece. Um, So, yeah, like the DeMar sign-in trade was what it was. DeMar has outperformed it still. Sure. I think the Vooch trade is the one where you're like, um, oh, so no, it was the Vooch trade. Obviously, yeah. I, I got my wires crossed. Sure. Giving Orlando those picks, you still got to give that pick to San Antonio next year from the Demar signing trade. That's not great, yeah, but still worth it. I think the Vooch trade, mm-hmm. they doubled down on a mistake, <laughs> is what they did, and that hindsight, I think you can be frustrated by. Um, as far as more wins now or more wins down the road. Um, would I have been upset oh, if the Lord. Bulls steered towards the bottom at a certain point last season, acknowledged the ceiling of this current core of players, and done something about it, and maybe bumped up their odds on the Wemby sweepstakes a little bit? No. I think that would have been a perfectly viable way to go. Someone, a certain someone's trade value was also a hell of a lot higher at last season's trade deadline than it is right now. Well, and his name is Zach too. Levine. Yes. Um, and that was too, so, so, yeah, you know. there's a few examples. Yeah. No, there's a few. There's, but but I think the Vooch one we can both just really just point to. And you. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? We can have, I don't think it's an argument or a debate on that one. Um, whether you it's the trade or whether it's the re-signing. You yeah. Know, either one you can point to because you're like, ah, oh, you gave up too much. Because you got to give up a pick. I understood giving up a pick. Like, you're going to have to. It was still Vooch at that point in time. But it was just the two picks that you right. gave up. That everybody was like, okay, <laughs> you know, all right, let's see. But then it was watching him and then putting yourself in that position where you had to re-sign him. But just seeing that worth, and they're like, I don't think anybody in the league thought his worth was that. So did you play, you kind of played yourself in that position. That's the thing in life, as I always tell my nephew, never play yourself. So they played themselves. They ended up with Vooch. He's playing better now. That's fine. But that contract is crazy. It is. Um, and, you know, the dead money of $20 million uh, in their cap for the last, like, basically two full seasons now yeah. and yeah. half of the, you know, first season of that Lonzo deal yeah. and still having that hanging over their heads this coming off season. Yeah. That hindsight, I'm like, okay, well, Whatever you knew about Lonzo's health at the time you made that sign exactly. and trade, you knew what you knew. Exactly. And you didn't know what you didn't know. Right. I I think had Lonzo not gotten hurt midway through that first season and has been out since for two and a half seasons, I mean, they looked brilliant because we all saw what the Bulls offense, limited as it might be, looked like when Lonzo was a part of it. <laughs> And we saw what their transition game looked like when Lonzo was a part of it. We saw what their defense looked like when Lonzo was a part of it. The answer to all of those things was a hell of a lot better. So that that hindsight is interesting. And it's like, look, I mean, unless there were giant red flags about Lonzo that they were ignoring, other than the ones that just basketball fans in general were aware of, Mm -hmm. as far as his previous list of injuries, they made a calculated decision. Mm -hmm. And they calculated risk into that decision. It bit him in the ass. Hard. Hard. But you tried. They went for the winning. And they I'll, did. And I'll never fault you for going for winning. You know what I mean? That's just not something I do. Uh, okay. Uh, moving on to the next question. Austin in the Die Hard Discord asks, 
Jesus. Okay. Sh- I'm guessing Austin is uh, being a bit sarcastic here. All right. Should we throw a parade if this team makes it back to 500? No. <laughs> you should not. Shouldn't throw a parade. Um, I'm going to be happy that they made it back to 500. Yeah, they fought back and got back to 500. Cool. Uh, no, not going to be over the moon doing cartwheels about it. No, I feel like Kobe the watching the shitty Lakers celebrate that victory. <laughs> we, yeah. Remember? That face, yeah. He was, he was, he was on was Kimmel's looking. show, and Jimmy Kimmel made him watch <laughs> yeah. a bunch of – it was like Swaggy P yep. and Boozer yep. and – yep. And there was like one of the Lakers seasons where they're like a 20 win team. Yep. I remember. Yeah. Yeah. I remember it. But Hayes is, is correct. Like making five doesn't mean anything if they don't stay there. Because, yeah, they can get back to there, but then they could easily lose the next three. You know what I mean? So, no, no parade will be thrown until goals are accomplished. Also, I mean, bigger goals, I should making say. It, even if they make it to 500 in the sense that they finish the season 41 and 41. Yeah. In my opinion, it means nothing because all that is accomplishing is something that when this front office first took power, they told the fan base was not acceptable in their eyes. 41 and 41 is the definition of mediocrity. And they told us they won't accept mediocrity. And all they've done since telling us they wouldn't is completely accept it and embrace it and then scorn or question the media and fan base when we raise an eyebrow or raise a hand and say, hey, this looks pretty freaking mediocre to me, mm-hmm. and you said that wasn't good enough, so what the hell are we doing here? It's true. Can't yeah, let's, let's throw a parade for that. Hooray! Huzzah! Oh It'd be a parade for one. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw a one-man parade when this season ends. <laughs> I'm going to bring some Coors Light. It'll already <laughs> be here. icy cold Coors Lights. Icy cold. Throw myself a one-man parade down Madison Avenue. <laughs> Thank <laughs> God this... Pointless shit is over. A drunken man has been arrested for walking down the middle of the street. Hey, man. Ah! Knock on wood. <laughs> never once have I been apprehended for public intoxication. That's good. Public urination. Good. I handle my shit, okay? <laughs> when you say walking down the street, all I see is just a shirtless peg walking down the middle of the street. I, I, I ah! shirtless wonder if he wants to come. With, if we can make it a two-man parade. Okay, you won't be arrested if shirtless wonder comes. He'll yeah. be fine. Yeah, they'll know who he, he is. He knows people. Yeah, he knows. Right? <laughs> wonder knows. He knows. He knows what's up. <laughs> <laughs> Protect Ale- him. Alexander in the comments saying, everyone's definition of mediocrity is different, Peck. Okay, sure. Mine is the same number of wins as losses. <laughs> That's pretty What's pretty your pretty counterpoint? Pretty yeah, mediocre. Well, I th- I, he probably looks at it like uh, depending on where the team is. Like if you're a young team that's striving to get to somewhere and you finish 500, that might not that might be good. That might not be mediocre. Matt says this was not a young team trying <laughs> to get to 500. It's a team talking about they wanted to win all the time, go to the playoffs all the time, and get to the championship, and all of that shit changed. And they got comfortable with the middle. Yeah. And that's, mm. that's exactly what, what he's saying, which is true. They're in the middle, man. They're in the middle. <laughs> That's a mediocre take. Shout out. Shout out for being here. We can, we can all have different definitions of a good take or a mediocre sure. take or a, a great take. Sure. Shout um, out to be, for being here, <laughs> Oh, here's a fascinating question from AJ in the Discord. Uh, at AJ, parentheses, it's baseball kid. Asks, if this current Bulls roster were to be stranded on a deserted island, who gets eaten first? Oh, Drum damn. Man. Drummond. Drumming is eaten first? Yeah, without a question. Because drum isn't his name, so you think of drumming? Because <laughs> he can drumstick. He's also the biggest. Yeah, I see I see Drummond as like an enforcer of the island, like a shout uh, out Mr. Echo from Lost. Like Oh no, we got he we got, had a he had a beaten stick he did. with some scripture on it. He did. Maybe Drummond goes that route. Shout out Mr. Echo. Ma- Damn, I forgot builds about a church. Damn, me too. Man. Right, dude. Underrated character because yeah. I think he's only in like seasons two and three. Yeah, but seasons two and three when like that was the apex of that show where you were like, "Yo, what the hell is yeah. going uh, on?" That show was yeah. wild. It's one apex. of the things that got me into Netflix was Lost. So shout out to him, man, for that. Whoa, <laughs> we gotta go back. We gotta no, go I was, back. I remember the you know the dad and son. Yeah, yeah, that oh, got man. a little annoying after a while. Yeah, yeah the smoke. Yeah, smoke monster. Smoke, smoke monster. monster. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Hurley though, dude. 
I just love saw him on, love uh, early. So I believe it was early. He was just sure. on uh, what show was he on? A uh, bookie with uh, Sebastian Maniscalco. I just finished that. Oh, show. really? That was fun. Awesome, solid fun show. show. Very solid show. Love that fact that Chuck Lorre is back with Charlie Sheen. Yeah, I thought was that good. was cool. Chuck Lorre did two and a half men. You know how that ended with Charlie yeah. Sheen. It's good that they're reconciled. Uh, let's get back to who we're eating. Yes. Yeah. What, okay. So just because Drummond would provide the most I, food because yes, he's the biggest. Because I'm th- okay and. This is my analogy here. When you, in a ro- in a wrestling match, when you're doing a, a, a Royal Rumble or something like that, a battle royal, yeah. When the biggest dude walks in, everybody teams up on the biggest dude Omas. to get him out because he's the one that could take out everybody. So everybody kind of teams like up and says, "Big fella, you're gone." Eliminating the biggest threat. Correct, and they get him out of here. I think that's what it would be with Drummond. Drummond could take out anybody on that Bulls roster. But at the same time, he could provide sustenance for, I think, I, the entire team for weeks to come. I, th- it's an interesting theory. You want to hear my theory? Oh, my God. Which is the correct answer? <laughs> Let's do it. Zach Levine. Why would you eat Zach Levine? Because they're all ready to move on. Uh-huh. I mean, like, I know that he came and sat on the bench with the team for one of their games recently. Right. And but I they, like, they like most everybody's reaction was like, Oh, hey, Zach's here. <laughs> I'm so, like. So you think they're going to eat the person they don't vibe with the most? Yes. And I think that this team is not really vibing with Zach Levine right now. Because think- they are playing hard. They're playing hard for one another. And his presence was clearly a distraction as much as he or their mm. coach or their front office or anyone else tried to say it wasn't a distraction Feel with the was. trade rumors and the injury and this and that. Um to eliminate something that no one else on the island is vibe. It's like you know banishing you from from the group. Okay, I I I think that that's you're taking a bite out of Levine first. Yeah, and you know does he offer as much protein sustenance no, as Drummond? Not no, at he all. does not. But for you know what I think your argument is ridiculous because for somebody whose name is Meat Peck, you turn down the person with the most meat and to go get a bone. It's absolutely ridiculous. No, you get the person with all the meat. First of all, I'm not going to be stranded on the island with none of them because this whole argument means I'm going to be the one that's eating. So let me, let me just say I'm not going to be on no kind of island with nobody. No, all right, dude, let me start. No there. one would want you to be eaten because everyone would want you to be there to keep the peace. Well, cool, but man, that's going to go out the window when the stomach <laughs> starts rumbling. <up. laughs> Mm, they, did you say peace? Peace of what? <laughs> mm, you looking scrumptious. Didn't somebody say my leg look like a turkey leg already? Come on, man. Uh, They're going to be after me. Colin is saying that uh, Drummond has the ability to grab every coconut before it hits the sand. Very important. Ooh. I assume you're referring to his uh, rebounding acumen. That's a good point. Uh, and that a coconut is resembling a basketball. My question is, then who get, you, you won Zach first. I'll say Drummond. Who gets eaten second? Who gets eaten second? Yes. Who's the second person you're going for? Well, so the question specifically said Bulls roster. Yes. Because I also want to be like, well, like Eversley. Like, you know, like, what is he, what is he doing? You, you're eating people out of spite. <laughs> I mean, Man, you can't eat what? out of spite and it's anger. Like, it, like, if, you, if we're going to live on this island, live together, die alone, right? What would you say you do here? Bring some usefulness to the group. Okay, you can't hunt boar. What else can you provide? Dude, man, <laughs> I love how he's bringing emotion to this. I'm, I'm really trying to think of like, okay, who provides the most meat? Can provide warmth, like something for a while. That's like, no, I don't like him. <laughs> I don't like him. And you're bad for the group, right? Get yeah. Out. I mean, taking no, you two out. My strategy: deserted <laughs> island with a large group of people would definitely be just Scarface from Half Baked. <laughs> But like, I will pick few, one or maybe a couple of people around who I'm like, you okay, we can stay. You can everyone else needs to go. Okay. Uh, well then that, that does let me know that I'll be around a little bit longer. I'm with Esteban. He's not going to eat me. Have you got have you guys seen what uh Society of the Snow? No. It's no. like the remake of Alive. It's, oh, okay. It's, it is a lot. I'll just say that. It's a it's a more it's gruesome a, it's a remake. Film. Well, I mean it's just it's not like it's a horror film or anything. It's just it's very real. Okay. And uh it's uh it's harrowing. I'll say that. So, oh man, <laughs> yeah. Uh, jo- Joel says Daylon Terry gets eaten second for not taking the game serious. Uh, Daylon takes it pretty serious. He just can't do certain things. Yeah, that's all. And I mean, talk about not having much meat on the bones. Yeah. Although I will give Daylon credit, he looks like he's bulked up a little bit. That's true. That's since true. his rookie year, this team has turned us into cannibals. <laughs> this is what we do. So we do. Uh, man. The, let's, uh, you know. 
find our mental health and peace wherever we can, however we can. And if that is hypothetically talking about bulls cannibalizing each other on a deserted island, then we're going to go with it. Let's roll with it. We are answering questions from the Die Hard Discord. Die Hard Discord, This is what y'all, y'all want to talk this is about. what y'all ask. So we'll talk about it. anything that is asked of us to be talk, uh, yes. talked about. <laughs> um, ooh, all right. Uh, this one is from our, our guy Brooms in the okay. Discord. Bears are going to have Caleb Williams. Hawks have Bedard. When will the Bulls get their next generational talent? It's a great question. I have no idea. Negative <laughs> 20 years? Oh, man. So the last generation one obviously is Derrick Rose. Derrick Rose. So it's been well, how long was the time between Rose and, and Jordan? So ninety eight. Drafted to, Rose in two thousand eight, uh, ninety eight, a decade. So a decade between so two thousand eight. It's been over a decade. It's been over obviously. a decade. So there, you know, I'm sure that there's some Jimmy Jimmy stands out there saying, "Hey, generational yeah. talent, Jimmy Butler." No, not generational talent. Um, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to answer that, man. Like, I, that's a tough one to answer. I don't know is the correct answer. Yeah, I have no idea. Look, I mean, how, I do you, no idea. how do you get a generational talent when you're picking 13th or 12th or you don't have any draft picks? No, you can still get generational. Hello, Giannis is, was in the 13th and, and 14th. You can yeah. still get generational okay. talent by that. It's like, I, I just don't see one in this draft here, and I don't know what the next draft is going to look like. And Plus, you need I to mean, have draft picks. If yeah. you think your best bet at finding generational talent is drafting one, Mm-hmm. You gotta have high, draft picks. You gotta have a draft pick. Ideally, you have a high draft pick. Maybe there are a handful of examples. Oh, there are many. Nikola Jokic, even Giannis Kawhi going Leonard. late, Steph getting passed over, Paul you George. know, through the first half of the lottery. Yeah, there's plenty of examples. But if the Bulls, and according to AK, who said it himself, like, yeah, no, it's it's, it's my choice. Mm-hmm. The, the Ryan Starfs gave me full autonomy. He did say keep this. the roster together, or break it down and start over if you want. He is choosing to keep it together. Keep it together. Because some Bulls fans are saying, ah, the reason they're not breaking this up and trying again, starting over, start fresh, is because the Reinsdorfs won't accept a rebuild mm-hmm. again mm-hmm. this quickly. Yeah. AK shot down that theory he himself. Did. He did. Said, nah. So, so long as the Bulls want to be playing in that 9-10 play-in game, the next generational talent, when is it coming? <laughs> you tell me. Because <laughs> my fear is never. <laughs> Is that a bright, bright-eyed answer for you? I feel like the more you know, Rainbow came out when you said that. That's how it happened right there. The more you know. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, don't forget them lucky sevens. Yeah, don't forget them. Uh, we are <laughs> almost out of time, but we can squeeze in one more. It's from our guy, Clem, uh, a.k.a. French Bulls fan in oh, the Discord. Oh, shout out. Shout out. Uh, he's, he's quite, why, Jerry, why? Tell okay. Me okay, real question. According to you, who is the best foreign player in Bulls history? Tony Kukoc. I, I, there's no hesitation. See, in my, so my to thought. me, that was my de facto, like, automatic response answer. Okay. And then I thought. No. Ch- <laughs> hilarious. Luol Deng? Interesting. Oh, okay. Is Luol Deng higher ranking in Bulls history than Tony no. Kukoc? No. I mean, he doesn't have the three chips that Tony has. Or the six man of the year award. Correct. No. Couple of All Star appearances. Does as uh, eighteen trillion minutes played. <laughs> um, who is okay? Who is a better basketball player, Lou Wall or Tony? Tony Kukoc. You think so? Because Tony Kukoc is the one player that you looked at at that time and said he's ahead of his time. Because everybody says Tony Kukoc today would be Luca. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? So no, okay. it's it's Tony Kukoc. Fair yeah, question. absolutely. Also, like. Probably technically doesn't apply, but Joe Key was kind of an international I player. I knew he was going to do that. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I <laughs> said it in my head. I was like, he's going to say Joe Kim I mean, Noah. He's going to say Joe Kim Noah. I knew it. Scott, you know, <laughs> Swedish on his mom's side, French, Cameroonian on his dad's side. <laughs> I'm just saying. He's just saying. He's just saying. If, he, if he's allowed, that's the answer. Said Tony Kukoc is, but just wanted to hear some names like Joe Kim, Lou All, and not Felice. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Somewhere oh, on man. a Brazilian beach, Felicio is hanging out with a bucket of beers. Yep. And it's like 32 million in cash. Yep. Good for him. Like he pulled off the greatest heist the in the history. The greatest man. heist of all time. Guaranteed for you. I, <laughs> good God. Shout out to him. That man, what a wonderful, and, wonderful. And as Dredd's pointed out in the comments, Paul Zipser. Yes. Who we're high on. Oh, the legend. 
Imagine Paul Zipser. Remember, remember when that was said? Oh, by a Bulls front office executive. Oh, how about uh, Dolly Borg? I got eat. I was oh just about to God. say that, Jim. Paul literally Zipser, literally coming out my mouth when I saw that. We're high on. God, <laughs> we're high on. Aren't you so proud of me for not punching him at the bathroom at summer league last summer? <laughs> I am kind of proud of you for. Not I mean, doing that. we yeah. literally brushed shoulders, and yeah. I was like, Nyeh! "Yeah, contain I, myself." I am proud. I am proud. <laughs> That's my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Who, me or him? No, both. But you more so, obviously. You don't believe that? Yeah, no, obviously. <laughs> more so, dude. Quit having to, it always feels like something got to be proven here. <laughs> no, you, you more so. You know it is. Spend more time with you. You're the one, sir. That's true. So you would have you would have bailed me out if I was arrested. Oh, yes, absolutely. For, for starting a brawl. In, yeah, I don't want to bail you out in, in UNLV's men's room. I would have bailed you out and cussed you out for like forty-five minutes. <laughs> That's exactly how that would have went, dog. That's exactly how that. And I went. saved you that headache with my self-restraint. And I appreciate that. I don't know if you can do it twice. Though. I don't want you in that situation again. I don't want to test it a third time. Yeah, we don't need to test these <laughs> theories even more. This doesn't need to be tested. I'm just, yes, I am proud of you for showing that restraint. Thank you. For not saying anything, just continuing to move. Because everything in you, I'm sure, wanted to leap out. So badly. And just do a Jim Carrey in the bathroom on himself. Or it's you know. true. Uh, everybody, make sure you check out Will's latest writing. AllCHO.com is where you can find that. Some great mm -hmm. stuff on um, on io and kobe there yes uh become a diehard so you can get his uh his new go 101 newsletters as well yeah with uh deeper dives on play actions play breakdowns uh when we get to the off season he's going to do cap stuff draft mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. in that newsletter sign up to become a diehard um you can follow him will underscore gottlieb this guy right here is bow bawl sports <laughs> big dave i am bulls underscore peck we are chjo underscore bull shout out and thanks and a hello and a Farewell <laughs> to our friend Law. I mean, I'll be here tomorrow night doing Blackhawks. So yeah, I'll, okay. So I'll be around. Hang out. Be be we got a, Sarah says she'll be in for his. We Saturday. got a West Coast game tomorrow night. West Coast okay. yeah. Bulls are done with those. Yeah, yeah. Thankfully, and not the Hawks. The Hawks, um, they Hawks are end the season in LA. Thanks yeah. a lot, NHL schedulers. Yeah, it sucks. Well, you know, Hawks being a Western Conference team, it's just so many, so many late nights. Not great. So uh, Bulls are down in Houston tomorrow night. We will be here for pregame at 630 Central. Yes. Talk to you then. Until then, have a wonderful day. Have a great start to your uh, Thursday. See you. Be good. We all city like the mayor. 